Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to this game tutorial. So, um, last episode we've cured this nice splash screen so it turns on and off and over time it just disappears. That's really great. In this one we create the hub scene. Now it doesn't look like much but we actually did quite a lot of code to create a nice system for later on. So basically what happens is we have these two waypoints, the, the first one being the default waypoint. Uh, using that default waypoint for the camera, we are going to be able to see all the little elements we can click on. So over here we have a wire table, this is one of the elements whenever we click on it, it pops a menu. Now there's going to be multiple of those, so say a wire table, a refinery in the back, a uh, research facility somewhere, all of those they come with another waypoint of their own, like this one. And whenever we click on them, we actually zoom toward the object we're talking about. So it's going to assume the wire table waypoint now, show the wire table menu, and then we can click back to return to the default position. So that's pretty much what we've created today, guys. I hope you guys enjoy, and uh, without further ado, let's get started. Hey guys, so we got a big, big episode today in front of us, so let's get started. First thing off, we are going to start a new scene, so Control n on the keyboard, then Control s This is the beginning of our hub scene, so HUV, oops, uh, no backslash, and then we're going to drop that right inside the scene folder like we usually do. And we also um, will turn off <laughs> that really annoying skybox. Right. So here we go, we got a fresh new scene, and um, basically what's going to happen in this one, and I've took some notes over here, what's going to happen is I'd like to have a hub just like in uh, StarCraft 2. Now people that, are, uh, that play this game can relate to it, so basically what happens is you get all of these elements. Now you can barely see it, but say the water table over here, or this guy you can speak to, when you click on them, you actually move the camera closer to it and then a menu pops up so you can do your action. So say you click on the wire table, then the camera is going to go next to that wire table, pop a menu and then you choose which mission you'd like. Same thing with this guy and same thing with other elements. So um, basically the purpose of that hub is going to give us a place where we can decide to start a round, to view the special upgrades or research, and then view the, our tower stats and also a share center where it's going to allow us to just put some links to the outside. Alright, so guys, first off, let's um, let's actually create a hub manager. So I'm going to right click here, new empty, so create a empty game object. As always, you move it to the origin. This one is going to be the hub manager, just like so. And then what we're going to do is we are going to create a script for that one as well. So hub manager script. And there is quite a lot to write today. So let's just put that in the script folder, double click on it, and we will begin. Right, so hub manager, I want to be able to um, access it from every script in my scene. So I'll just create a static instance. So public static hub manager instance. Oops, instance set get. Oh, by the way, since I've made a typo, it would remind me. Uh, last episode, we actually made a little typo that I'd like to fix and a bug as well. So, if we double click on the warning we have, we go back inside the menu manager, and over here, I've declared a private bool called menu uh, available, but I was missing an L. So, I'll just put it here, and let's change it at the other places as well. So, it, it is now menu available. And we never actually use this one, but we should. So over here in the to game function, we're going to say if the menu is available, then go ahead and gen change scene else. We're just going to forget about uh, changing the scene. Right. So this is fixed. And uh, maybe you didn't see the bug, but we just we just fixed something. So if you haven't seen the bug, then uh, you fix a future error. Congratulations. Now. Let's go back and um, the first thing I think we'll tackle in the hub manager is the camera because I like to have the camera uh, done as soon as possible when creating a new scene. So let's do that. Those are going to be camera specific fields. Let's start with the transform of that camera. So public transform, um, cam transform. And the way we're going to work is we're going to have some waypoints positioned around in the scene and those are going to be the places where the camera can snap to. 
Uh, so say we're looking at the war table, um, then the war table has a waypoint and we can just tell the camera, okay, just go fix yourself on the war table waypoint. So uh, we're also going to have a default waypoint for when we're not focusing anything. So private, oh, you know what? Let's, uh, let's swap that around. So it is a private transform can transform. And then on top of that, I'll create a public transform default camera waypoint. Okay, so this one is now public and the can transform is now private because we're not going to, you know, we don't have to share this with everybody. Right. And the next field would like is the de desired position and finally a private quaternion desired rotation because we're going to be smoothing um, we're going to be smoothing that movement we're not simply going to click and then we spawn uh, next well we actually put the camera where we'd like to be we're, we're going to have a smooth movement in between where it was and where it's going and uh, yes yeah, so we've got this out of the way let's go ahead and start coding our move camera function so private void update and that update is going to move the camera pretty similar to the other uh, script so we create an update in the update we put our move camera inside of it what we're going to do is we're going to say cam transform dot position is going to equal a vector 3 dot loop in between uh, where it is currently so cam transform dot position and also the desired position like so and as for the float let's just put time dot delta time and that's pretty much it for the um, the position. Now let's do the rotation. Cam transform dot uh, rotation. Is that it? Yeah, rotation is equal to a quaternion dot lerp, and then we lerp in between the current rotation and then the desired rotation. Again, using time dot delta time as the transition float. Okay. But now we don't have anything that actually sets that. We don't have any the kind of call that is going to set, okay, well, this is your desired position and this is your desired rotation. So we are also going to create this time a public function, so public void set desired um, position, set desired waypoint. And we are going to send that waypoint as a transform. So transform waypoint just like this. Now all we have to do is really simple. We're gonna say desired position is equal to waypoint dot position and desired rotation is equal to waypoint dot rotation. We're simply just grabbing the values from that transform we send. And um, just to make sure this work, we're gonna put it in the start. So let's create a start, private void start. And instead of that start, we are going to do set desired position or I mean set desired waypoint to the default camera waypoint. Okay, so quite a lot of code. We did it quite fast. Hopefully everything works. Let's go actually have a look. So um, this is our main camera. This is our new scene, basically. We have the, the hub manager over here at 000, and he has a default camera waypoint. Now what I felt like doing is actually using the main camera like this and just drag and dropping this uh, camera here but it's not going to work so we're going to need another empty game object so actually you know what? I'm going to make a uh, no I empty game object yeah that works okay so empty game object this is going to be the default waypoint and now remember this is going to be both the camera position and also the orientation okay um, how should we go about doing this there is a little thing that we must remember is that whenever we have this hub scene, well, I mean, we have the hub scene right here, but what we don't see is that the tower is going to be there. The tower is going to be in the center of the world. It's always on zero, zero, zero. Now, I don't necessarily want to see that tower in this shot, in this uh, scene at all, but what we could do is simply turn the camera away. It's going to be there. It's going to be there in memory, so it saves no, it saves some memory we don't have to boot it back up when we start the game or we go back to the other menu so it's going to remain there but we're pretty much just going to turn off all the noise on it if there is any and we're not going to look at it so what I was thinking about doing is um, pretty much this is the origin of the world that's zero 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 you see the camera over here I am going to take it 
do a 180 in rotation, so minus 180 in Y, and we're going to make our scene this way. Okay, so how exactly should we go about doing this? Let's actually create a focus object. So I'm going to create a new cube, and again move it at the origin of the world, then we're going to move it again. So we move it here, then I'm going to scroll it all the way over there to say minus 15. And we're just going to assume that this is the war table. This is where you start missions. Now obviously we don't need the boss collider. Let's just have the mesh render and uh, that, that's it for now. So here we go. Now what we'd like to do is actually, well the camera, when we start the game, the camera is going to be say on 0, 0, 0. It doesn't really matter. But what we'd actually have, like to have is uh, the default waypoint should assume the position we want it to be at the start of the game. So say this is perfect for us, we actually like this view of the wire table and then we're going to have some more elements in the background, so maybe the research facility here and uh, you know the view perk over here. All that kind of stuff is going to be visible from this angle, from this um, starting position of the camera. So if this is uh, good for you, all we have to do is actually just copy the value over to the default waypoint. So you see how we got 0, 1, and 10, and minus 10. Let's do the same thing here. So 0, 1, and minus 10. Now we have the same exact position. Let's make sure that we also have the same rotation. So minus 180, and maybe give it a slight rotation like that. Uh, yeah, so minus 180 and say 5 in X. Let's go back, 5 and minus 180. Okay. And just to differentiate those two, I'm going to put a uh, orange tag on every single waypoint. Good, so if we go back to the hub manager, we assign the default waypoint on the default camera waypoint field. This is what we should have. We should press play, and we get an error. <laughs> so let's, ha let's have a look at uh, what the error is. Uh, basically, we don't have a cam transform, so over here in the start, we're going to say cam transform is equal to camera.main.transform. Like so. And now we do have a camera transform before we use it. So great. Nothing crashes, everything works. Now, if you take a look, I'm going to just choose a camera and pull it over here. As you can tell, we've got this smooth movement working already, so. Uh, that's just to prove that it is going to work whenever we launch the game and we have more than one waypoint. And uh, talking about more waypoint, we are actually going to start working on those other waypoints. So, um, I was thinking about making a new object for every single one of these. So, a new script, C sharp script, and this is going to be, I'm not sure, so I'm just going to call it ob object, but this is going to be uh, on every single object we can focus in the hub and every single one of these are going to have a, uh, a transform that we'll use for a waypoint and also a menu object so public transform waypoint and also public game object menu okay let's also make sure they have a canvas group so we can uh, play with the alpha just like we did in the last episode and also a transition float, like so. And we could actually be putting it on zero. A boolean for the in transition. So we're pretty much just remaking what we've done uh, last episode. Private bool is popping because we also want to be able to hide it once we're done with that menu. Okay, so um, hub object, let, let's actually make sure it is placed on, say, the table over here. Let's place our hub object on the table and this one needs a menu and a waypoint now let's let's just avoid that for now and uh, keep on coding our object and then we're gonna go ahead and just create those waypoints and also create a menu but uh, basically what is going to happen is first we need to make sure we have a reference to that canvas group so in the start private void start we're gonna say C group is equal to menu.getComponent and we're getting the canvas group component like so then we're gonna turn off the alpha by saying cgroup.alpha is equal to zero 
and let's also make sure we cannot interact with it so cgroup.interactable is equal to false so basically whenever the game starts we're just shutting off completely the menu all right now the menu we don't we don't see it just yet we haven't made it but uh, it's basically when you focus the war table you're gonna have something that pops up so something that gives you option to either start around or increase difficulty all that kind of stuff okay and um, should we do the update right now let's actually do the update really quickly so in a update we're gonna first start by checking okay is the trans transition float uh, done with his transition so is it smaller than zero or um, bigger than one so if transition is smaller than zero or if transition is bigger than one that means the transition is over and we can say in transition is equal to false now just after that we're gonna check okay is that transition over if it is we're gonna return so if in transition is false let's return like so and then um, if if that's not the case if we're still in transition then we need to increment that transition float so that's where we're gonna be using the is popping so transition is plus equal and then we do the ternary operator so if we're actually showing the menu if we're popping the menu then it's going to plus equal time dot delta time else it is going to do plus minus time dot delta time um, so this way if you're currently like popping the menu then the transition float is going to increase and if you're hiding it it's going to decrease then after that all we have to do is to do uh, C group that alpha is equal to transition okay now um, everything like that work yeah everything in that works we just need to have a way to toggle this on to actually toggle the uh, show menu so this time a public function and that's the last one so public fade menu and the reason I've called it uh, fade, fade sorry I'm getting a little bit messed with my words the reason I'm, I'm calling this fade and not say show menu or hide menu is because I'm going to decide if I show or if I hide it in the boolean field that I'm about to pass so bool show if show is true then we're popping the menu if it is false then we're hiding the menu and let's actually do it right here so is popping is equal to show and then also C group the canvas group dot interactable is also equal to show so if you're popping the menu then you're showing the menu and since the menu is shown you can interact with the buttons as simple as that and then if um, if we do actually fade that menu then in transition is equal to true and then we can do transition and we're gonna clamp it in case it went beyond a certain point so we're gonna clamp that transition in between 0 and 1 okay so quite a lot of code and this is all going on say the war ta the war table the refinery the uh, all these little objects we're gonna be focusing if we take a look back at the picture then that would be the war table in this case Rainer and uh, maybe the these thing in the back I don't quite remember but you know these objects are the hub object in our case uh, we're only gonna do one today because we got we got quite a lot to do still we haven't done uh, we're not done with the hub manager because we need this to work so if we press play right now let's see what is not working okay so all right so as for the waypoint what we're gonna do is actually we are going to create let's see the war table here we're gonna create a uh, child of that so I will create a empty game object again this one is going to be the Oops, I'm going to rename it for the war table waypoint. And let me just remove that capital letter here. Put that as a children, so make sure you drag and drop it on the war table. Now I'm going to do 0, 0, 0. In fact, it doesn't really matter if you do 0, 0, 0 or not, because we're going to be um, moving it right now. And the way we're going to do this, and this is going to look a little bit funky, I will rescale my scene so it actually looks like the resolution on the left so about like this then we're gonna have a good look at our war table like so now war table is a cube right now of course but eventually it's going to be something a little bit more pretty 
and there we go so that would be good uh, I would have my menu up here like this and my work table would be at the bottom of my screen so that's my current plan right now and uh, once we've got this position once everything is is fixed like that and you like this kind of orientation as well you are going to select the war table waypoint go under game object and align with view now if we go back to a normal mode we have a look at our game object it is now right here with the good position and with the good angle as well and I'm just going to put a icon on it so I can see and here we go so we have our wire table waypoint if we go back on the object drag and drop this here then yeah we've got our waypoint now all we're missing is a menu and let's actually do the menu right now right click somewhere create a canvas our canvas is the UI root canvas scaler is going to scale with the screen size again and reference resolution is 640 and 960 in Y so where is our canvas here it is that's our canvas right there the first thing I'll actually do in this canvas is I will create a button just like we did uh, in the last episode it is going to cover the whole screen actually so make sure this is stretched on both horizontal and vertical axis then put all on zero also remove the text that's not useful and what I'm going to do is I'm not going to remove the image this time I'm simply going to take the color of that image so under image color bring the alpha down like so and also make sure that whenever we start the, uh, the game this is not interactable okay so this is going to be my my kind of back button so say you're in a menu and you click outside of that menu then it's going to bring you back it's going to be like some kind of way to exit that menu which I think is really useful so this is the back button okay but of course it is invisible you're never gonna see it as an actual you know sprite but if you click away from your menu then the action is going to be to be ran right so we've got this now we said we needed a um, a war table menu so let's go ahead and do that start with a nice panel war table menu just like so this is going to be say uh, anchor at the top pivot at the top as well going to move the position to say about 50 minus 50 width 500 height 500 why not and that sounds actually great for me right now I don't want to get uh, I don't want to go too far as for now I just leave it simple like that and under that war table we're gonna need a canvas group so we can actually control the stuff that is inside of it so is it interactable or not and how's the alpha okay so we've got our waypoint we've got our menu here is our war table we're back at it we are going to drag and drop our menu right in here okay um, let's actually do do we make sure that this is hidden at first let me just double check oh yeah I see it over here so basically whenever we start the game it is going to hide that very menu now if we go back inside our HUD or I mean our hub manager we need to find a way um, to actually click on our war table so whenever we click on our war table we can actually call the fade menu uh, function on it so we've got the update over here we've got the move camera so desired position but what we really like right now is to have the update um, see if we're clicking on the object or not so see if we're clicking on the hub object or not so in the update we're gonna start playing around with some uh, raycasts and let's do it right now we're gonna start with a simple touch so if input that get mouse button up this time we're gonna do up and we should go ahead and fix it in the other script as well uh, we will do that a little bit later on the reason we're doing up is because um, the button on Unity, like the, the new button, the new button system, are actually being pressed when you release the key. So if we do it right here, if we did get mouse button down, then we would actually press 
the action would be run and then we would release um, we would actually release our button and then it might press on something else in the UI that's a little bit messed up so you just gotta make sure that you actually use get mouse button up for the uh, UI buttons right so once that is done once we've got once we know that the user actually pressed somewhere let's go ahead and declare a raycast it field and um, we're gonna fill it if we hit something so if physics dot raycast so we're sending a ray and that ray we're gonna take it from the camera so inside of the parentheses we're gonna say camera dot main and we're gonna do a screen point to ray now screen point to ray takes in a vector 3 value that we usually just pass in the mouse position so it's getting a little bit messy in this code but don't worry about that so that's the ray right here first parameter now the second parameter is the health value we're gonna be using let me just show you we are going to be using I think it is around the tent overload this one so we're sending a ray then we're receiving that information back we also set a max distance and a layer mask so the second parameter is a out it just like this so we're returning the value of uh, whatever ray cast or whatever it hits inside the it field and then as for the max distance we should say about 30 um, we could be safe and actually just set something like 75 it doesn't really matter in this case and um, the layer mask that is really important because we don't want our raycast to actually hit something else say hit a piece of UI or hit a animated piece that is work, like actually flying in front of us at that time so we need to make sure that our raycast only test against the hub object and we are going to create a new layer for that so first before we go ahead and do that we're gonna say layer mask dot get mask and we're gonna get the mask called uh, let's call it hub oop, hub object like this right and all of that is a if value <laughs> so uh, I'm missing parentheses here sorry about that but all of that is a if value so if we actually manage to hit something then we do some other stuff but before we I will actually keep going in that way let's make sure that we actually have this layer mask so copy and paste what you've put inside of the string value here we are going to go over to the wire table go under layer up here and then create a new layer called hub object we click away we go back on the wire table and we actually set it now so hub object over here and also change the children as well so here it is that's the wire table it is under the hub object layer and if we manage to hit that let's just make sure everything works and we're gonna do a debug.log and we can actually say hit uh, dot name why not hit game object hit transform dot name just to test it out we press play everything is hidden I click on this and nothing works right now so what I'm thinking about is um, the UI might be blocking our input so let's just make sure this doesn't happen interactable is off okay okay so small mistake on my part again um, we're actually sending a raycast but I've told you guys to delete the box collider the raycast actually stops on collision and since we've removed the collider of that box then it doesn't really detect anything it just goes through so we're gonna go back on the wire table and actually set a box collider. So sorry about that. Small mistake on my part. And then I'm going to uh, I'm going to hit play again. Then if I click here, nothing happens. If I click here, we get the wire table. So we actually hit the wire table right now. Okay. So what's going to happen at that point is we are going to say. Um, I think we should keep a value of that somewhere. So let's go back up here and declare a section for hub object a private hub object current hub object and using that field we're actually going to put it in here so we're going to say current hub object is equal to hit dot get get I mean hit dot transform dot get component and we're going to get the hub object component on that object right so 
Once we finally got this object, we can go ahead and say current ob object dot fade menu, and we're gonna say through because we're actually showing the menu at that point. And then we can go ahead and just um, set the desired position. So set desired waypoint to current hub object dot waypoint. Okay, well, let's try this out once more. We're gonna hit play. And this is how it works. So it's looking fairly good right now. Now we need to find a way to actually exit this and that's what we're gonna do. So uh, I'm thinking about actually having the back button work now. So for that, we are going to need Unity engine.ui. So up here, we're gonna say using Unity engine.ui. We're gonna declare a public button. This is the back button. And let's just make sure that it is set right now so we don't forget. Under Hub Manager, find the back button, the one that takes the whole screen, so this one. And go ahead and just put it right here in the field, back button. Okay, so at the very beginning, let's just make sure that that back button, that interactable, is equal to false. So we cannot interact with the back button at all. Now, um, whenever we do hit something and we enter focus with a hub object then it is now interactable so let's just say set but but uh, back button is equal to true so back button dot interactable is equal to true so now we can actually click it okay so all we need right now is to find a place where we actually turn this off and at the same time we can you know uh, just put the current ob object back to null we can uh, fade the menu and then we send in the false parameter. We need all that kind of good stuff. And I think we're gonna need another function for that as well. So let's just go ahead and down here, let's make this one public. So public void drop menu. So whenever this function is called, we're just gonna go back to the initial state of the scene. Now we're not gonna do a scene management dot load scene because that would be, that wouldn't be cheating, but that's not really polish and we need to have the animation rolling. So what we're going to do is if current ob object is equal equal to null, then that means we're already in that good state. We're already in a clean state. So let's just return. Just a quick condition check over here. And then um, if that's not the case, so if we do have a hub object focus right now, we're going to say current hub object dot fade menu to uh, false. This way is going to play the same animation as we saw, but backward. And then we can go ahead and say current ob hub object is equal to null. Then back button dot interactable is also equal to false. And let's just go ahead and set the desired waypoint. I'm having trouble to write right now. To default camera waypoint. So now we should really have something clean, um, something that is back to normal. So. Let's just have a look, a quick look at the whole thing. We have the start, the update, the set desired position. Let's uh, put that together. And I think that's pretty much it. Okay, so everything should work. Now we only need to find, we only need to find a way to um, call this drop menu function. And we're gonna do it via the back button. So we've got this public function. We go on the back button and under onclick event, Going to hit the plus sign, drag and drop my hub manager in there. Choose hub manager, drop menu. Here it is. Okay, so let's just say we're going to start from the very beginning and do a big test. So preloader, press play. We've got our nice menu rolling. We click here. So we click here, nothing happens, which is normal. Achievement, leaderboard, swap save, reset save, or touch to start. So right now I just hit touch to start and it doesn't work because we haven't added the ob to build menu. So let's go, let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go under build settings and this is our build settings. Let's make sure we double click on hub and add open scenes. Okay, now back to our preloader, press play. Everything works still, we touch to start. Then here we are. So this is our default camera view. If we just take a look right here. This is the uh, default waypoint. Now we're gonna click on our object. It's going to zoom towards the object 
well, it's pretty much just going to assume the um, wire table waypoint over here. And then if we click inside of this, so inside the menu, once once we have option such as, okay, you're going to start a game here or you're going to change the difficulty, nothing happens. Now, if we click outside of it, and that is where we get a little bug, but we're going to fix that later on. If we click outside of it, and if we don't click on the wire table at the same time, say over here, then it goes back to the initial state. And that's a lot of code, but we've managed to create a nice system that we're going to be able to reuse for the rest of the elements. Alright guys, so this was a fairly long episode, sorry about that, but we covered quite a lot, so um, at least happy about that. And um, if you guys enjoy or if you like this video, if you learned something, please leave me a like, really appreciate that. If you have any question or comment, you can also leave them in the comment section below. I'll try to answer as soon as possible. And guys, subscribe for more tutorials like these. It also really helps out by quite a lot. So thanks a lot for watching again, and I will see you in the next one.